In this video, I'd like to give you an introduction into the Agba eSubmission Builder. This is a software designed to create and maintain dossiers and to publish them in one of the formats GHSDS and CADI. If you're not familiar with those terms and want to know what Agba is and uh, what are those publication formats, I would like to invite you to visit this website here eSubmission.agba.eu and there you can find information about the publication standards GHSDS and CADI. You will find information about the eSubmission viewer which you use to view the dossiers. You have the eSubmission validator for the validation and finally here you have the information about the eSubmission builder. More specifically you find information how to download, install and run um, then there is a document, what is new, to provide you with some update information, changes, so please check. There is an online help and a frequently asked question document. So in this video I would like to show you how to download and install and run for the first time and then give you an overview about the functionality of the submission builder. So to start, let's go to the download section. Now we are on the download page and we can now click on the link on the right side here to start downloading the file, which currently is um, a 192 megabyte file provided as a zip file, but slightly renamed to um, avoid some issues with proxy servers that may occur. So please proceed download this file, which I have done already before I started recording. And then you will get this file on your local machine. I have it now stored here in a folder on my local PC, C programs. It is important to store and zip this, unzip this file on a location on your local hard drive, which is usually your C drive and not on a network drive, because otherwise the application will probably be much slower. And second, that the path where you store it is quite short, because after unzipping you may violate the total length limitation of folder path within Windows. So I have created this folder C programs and have stored the file there. You may need to ask your local IT, if you're not able to create this folder, where to store and unzip your file best. So the next step would be to select the file and press F2 and remove this additional suffix so we can then have a real zip file. Then we can proceed unzipping in this location, so you simply create subfolder and the application is unzipped. Now we have the new folder here. We open its root directory and we will see a couple of startup. We, we will see first a startup script which we will need to start the application. Second we have a shortcut to open the user interface in the web browser and the third script is to stop the application. So we click on this first startup script and the application will now start. More specifically the server side of the application will start because it's a client server application quite similar to other applications like iUclid. So this takes a few seconds to start and at the end of the startup procedure you will find a message like this one here started X out of Y services that is the end of the default startup procedure. Now please do not click into this window, do not close it, simply minimize it by clicking here so this window 
is remaining in your taskbar, which is okay. Then we can start the application by clicking on this shortcut link. So what then happens is your default browser will open and you will see the startup screen. Um, there are different browsers out there. Our experience is that it works best with Firefox and Chrome. We had some issues with Internet Explorer and more specifically Edge. We eventually may be able to correct those in the next release. But as of now, I will continue in Chrome. So what you can do at any time is you simply copy the URL of your of a browser. You can start another one and paste it in and you continue where you have left off. So now I continue in Chrome. What you will see after startup is this information page because we are now in a public testing phase for this release until July 17th, 2020. And we really invite you to test the program and report your feedback. So either if you find bugs, please report them or also feature requests or generic support requests. And please regularly check the What's New page where we can provide you with some up-to-date information about this release. Uh, please notice that Eggbar is not able to provide a full commercial product software like support, but uh, we will be able to respond to generic support requests around the software itself, but not with your specific installation and integration problems. We can close this startup screen. And now we are on the so-called dashboard perspective. So on the left, you will find different so-called perspectives. We are now on the home or the dashboard perspective. And this perspective gives you an overview of what is the functionality of this tool. So on the left side, we have two repositories. One is for dossiers and one for documents and we will see this in a second. And on the right side, we have so-called reference entities, which we can manage, like legal entities, which are sender recipient, the substances or the products, which we maintain to be part of dossiers, pick list information, and also the templates for the table of contents. Um, I will now show you the different perspectives and we will start with the more easy the, the easier perspectives and we will end up with the document and dossier perspectives later so you understand the logic more easily so let's start with this perspective down here which is the pick list perspective pick lists are the concept to define what values you have in controlled fields like combo boxes for example for the formulation type there are the different values which you can provide um, based on the give up definitions um, so we will we also have the technical component or technical material entry here um, so these pick lists are defining what values you will get as suggestions when you fill the respective fields. There are two different types of pick lists. One is an open pick list, which means that you can change or add your specific value. So you can override it. These are the open pick lists. And the closed pick lists are marked with a closed lock so you have to use the values provided by the tool because the respective pick list values are part of the standard for example you cannot add or change the pick list values here but when you add values in your documents or your dossiers this is for the specific purpose only 
So right now there is no management of the basic or the core pick list values as such. These are provided as is. They mainly come from the GHSTS standard, but you for the open pick list you can change them ad hoc. The next perspective is the perspective about the talk templates. The talk or the table of content is the hierarchical structure which uh, you use to attach documents to. And the talk usually defines the regulatory requirements in, a, in its hierarchical form. Right now here you find the OECD PPP talk from I think 2005, uh, which you can view here. Right now there is no manipulation uh, possibility built in here, but in future uh, we may envision to add new templates or to allow to create your own templates or to manipulate templates. So next we come to the products and components perspective. Now products and components, um, these are the elements you use to define what is the actual scope of your dossier. You see here, of course, we, as we started the application, everything is empty. So before we proceed, I suggest that I put in some data. And the easiest way to do so is to import an existing CADI dossier. So therefore, I will quickly go to the dossier perspective and import an existing CADI dossier. So you can import CADI dossiers into this tool. You have to then select a CADI XML file. What is important when you select um, the when you want to select the CADI XML that the selection dialog may be in your taskbar and you have to open it. Therefore, we provide this hint here. Uh, that you have to open it from its taskbar. So here I will now import and select um, the CADI sample dossier from the website. I select an arbitrary CADI XML from one of the submissions of this project and click open. Then you see that the tool has recognized that we have four versions in the, inside of this project, which we, which we can now import into the tool. I click on import, you get the information that it's importing, and after a few seconds, we will see the data of this CADI XML imported into our tool. We can close now the, this import screen. So we will have a look at this dossier perspective in a second, but now let's go back to this products and components perspective where we left off. And now we see we have the data from this imported dossier in this screen here. So what do we have? Some dummy data. We have a product here, which is a formulation type TC, which, have, which has one constituent, which is the substance here. The substance here has a specific CAS number as identifier. So this perspective here is built quite similar to other perspectives we will see in a second. On the left side, sorry, on the left side we have a, what we call a repository, an overview of existing entries. And on the right side you have the details of this entity. So let's, for example, create now a new component here. Component is just another name for substance. So we have it as a substance here. I simply save it. We could add more identifiers or descriptions, but that's okay for a second. And we have a new test component here. We also can in a similar manner create a new test product. We can have a formulation time. Let's go to, let's do another TC. 
So this means that it's not a real product, but actually the product is 100% is a technical material. And we can then, uh, I go back to edit mode, we can then, when we have selected our new test component here, we can add this selected component to the composition and specify that it's 100% of this test component. So now we have a product, a second product consisting 100% of, of this component. Why is it done this way? Because in the dossier you assign a product and when it's actually an active substance dossier, you need to create a dummy product which is simply a wrapper of your substance or your component. In a similar manner, you could create and modify other products and components. Next, we go to the legal entity perspective. And um, I'll show you in a second how substances and legal entities are used as part of dossiers, of course. Again, on the left side, we have an overview of existing entities. On the right side, we have the metadata for them. So as we have imported a file, uh, sorry, a dossier, we have now ECBA as a company and ECBA ESEC as a regulatory authority as dummy data. And this is used as either sender or recipient dossiers. Again, we can create a new legal entity here. Uh, And we have to create a company. Let's take Germany as an example. This is the minimum data. And we could supply address data and additional contacts and one to many contact persons. I leave it like this for a second. And you have a new regulatory uh, legal entity now here in this tool. So this is quite easy and eventually a bit boring. Let's go. Let's move up to the more interesting part. Let's go to the management of the documents. So what you see here now is again similar to what we've seen before. On the left side, the repository. On the right side, the metadata. So first, what do we see here? We see the data from the imported dossier. Now let's click on an arbitrary entry. What you see here is the concept of a so-called document family. In the upper part, you see the different document families. And a family is the generalization of um, versioning concept, which you find uh, in document management tools like SharePoint, where you have versions over time of the same document. It's a similar concept here, um, but it is more generalized because it allows you to collect different variations of the same document over time, which are not only evolving over time, but also variations like sanitized and non-sanitized, or the same information, different translation, German and English, or in different layouts with or without stamping. So this family then groups one to many versions of the document. Uh, and this avoids a proliferation of document entries in your repository. So please use a, a document family to group the same information, the same type of information. So for this specific example, now we see that in the lower part, we have three different types or three different versions, which come from, in this case, three different um, versions of the dossier. And when I click on it, I see the specific information on the right side. Um, if we want to know what the actual content of this document is, we can use the document viewer, which is built in, into the tool. So this is the main representation of the document, which is always a PDF file. Um, as this is a dummy data, we don't see any meaningful PDF files in this example. But what we can do right now, again, we can create a new version. 
you can create your own version tag. So I test tag here. For example, you could use it to say you now want to attach here the sanitized version. Uh, and I need to first save now the document. And then you see you have the new version here. Now we can proceed to select a main file. So I could now proceed to attach a main file. Let's take one of the one from the sample dossier. I now have it attached here already to my new document version. In a similar manner, you can fill out the remaining fields of the metadata and you can attach also other documents like Word documents, Word files, whatever. Let's take another PDF here as example, doesn't matter. You can add one too many attachments and you can specify more information what this attachment is about. So in this way, you can build up your document repository and those documents are being offered for use in the dossiers. Um, to show you a bit how you can optimize your screen display, we can, if you want to work on a document specifically, you can hide this repository part by sliding it out and sliding it in using those tools. On the other side, you can slide in, slide out the document viewer. So this allows you to adapt your screen to what you actually want to do. You can even have the metadata only. A similar navigation is possible in other perspectives as well, especially the dossier perspective. Okay, so now this should hopefully help you to understand this concept of documents, document families, and how to create your document families. You may have seen that the versions here are, ma are marked with a snowflake. This means that as they are imported and assumed to have been submitted to authorities already, they are immutable. So you cannot change them anymore. As we've seen, you can create new versions, but you cannot change information coming from an imported dossier. In a similar manner, when you have used a, dos a document version in publications and you have marked the dossier itself as uh, frozen, also the assigned document versions will become frozen and immutable. This is simply to make sure that uh, you keep a clear snapshot of what you have submitted and then you can create new versions based on this baseline. Now, let's finally move up to the dossier perspective, which we have briefly seen before, and work with dossiers. In a similar manner to documents, a dossier is also considered a project which contains one too many dossier versions. So a dossier or a dossier project, which you can see here in the upper part, is considered to be representing a regulatory action which can span multiple months or years and can contain one too many dossier versions, which may vary over time. So in this example, we have imported four versions which are frozen, which are immutable because they are imported. We click on a version and now we see the table of contents here in the middle. So now this is the table of contents and we can navigate through this table of content. We can first expand it because it's in hierarchical structure. Now we see the full structure. We see in the numbers here, the number of documents which are in this subtree, or if you are on a leaf node, the numbers of documents which are in this specific node. So now I click here, let's take, take this one. I click on a node with six documents 
And if I click on it, you will see the contents of this note in the lower right corner. So what you see here is what is in this document, uh, sorry, in this dossier note. We can navigate through the tree, going up and down into the notes. We can also decide to hide the empty notes. The empty notes are the notes marked in gray, which currently do not have any documents aside. So the tree gets a bit smaller. And now you see the filter sign, uh, which indicates you that you don't see the full tree. If you click on the filter sign again, it will show you again the full tree. So now you see this is the dossier that has been imported and you can navigate through the notes and see its content. Let's ignore the upper right part here for a second. This is for when we later change and, and create a new dossier version and change the assignments. Again, we can hide the repository part to get new, to get more space here. And we can slide in the document information. Now, when I click here in on, on the documents in the node, you see on the right side, the document information changes. And you can even show now the contents of the documents here. So you now see what is part of this specific node. As this is all more, more or less dummy data, of course, what you see is not really meaningful right now. So this allows you to browse your dossier um, prior to submission, for example. Now, finally, this is an e-builder tool, so it's about publication. It's about handing over information to authorities in one of the two publication formats. So now I want to show you how to publish this information. This has been imported before, but still we can publish it. So now we move to the publications perspective, which is that one here. Again, on the left side, you will see your dossiers. This hasn't changed. And we will go to the first version here. And we will now publish, simply republish this version from the tool itself. As this dossier has been imported, it is considered frozen. This is what I've told you before. Imported dossiers cannot be modified anymore. And so they are frozen. Still, we can publish. I click on the publish button here for the CADI XML format to generate a CADI XML publication. So now you see the publication is a very quick operation. When I've published, and you see here the publication date, I can open the publication in the eSubmission viewer, which is a tool that is also available on the EGBA eSubmission website. Just to go back here, this is the tool which you can download here. If you have properly installed, you can click on this button and the eSubmission view viewer will start automatically and display this publication immediately in CADI format. So this is very convenient. Of course, you can also download, op open the publication folder, which is again a bit, um, which requires some manual intervention because the window will probably be hidden in your taskbar. So this is now where we have published our dossier. It is below our installation folder. And we can also decide really to download the publication as a zip file, which is not really meaningful right now, because the current release of the eSubmission Builder is a standalone version which runs on your desktop PC anyhow. 
Good. So what I want to do next is I want to create a new dossier version. But before we can do that, we have to publish um, all imported versions first, because as you know, as you may know, Caddy and GGSDS contains references to preceding publications. So the publications are related. Therefore, I now need to go in all preceding versions and I have to publish them or republish them. So now this I publish version 2. I publish version 3 of Caddy. And I publish version 4. So now all four versions of this previously imported caddy are also being exported. And we can continue now to create our own fifth version. To do so, I go back to the dossiers perspective. And I select create new dossier version. You can select a version title with some meaningful name. This is the only information you need to provide for a version and I click Save. What happens right now is that a copy of your version 4 is being generated for you and now you see that your fifth version is now in edit mode. So you can edit this version. You can change it according to the rules that are, that are allowed by the standard. Let's go for example for this to this document N. Now we let's go back sorry to, to edit mode. So always make sure that you are in edit mode to change things. We are now in document N and we can for example now decide to mark a specific document as retired. So we, we can mark it logically deleted. So now you see, um, indicated by this strike through, that this document is now marked as deleted. For another document, we may decide to replace it with another member of the same document family. Think of a study summary which you have updated over time. You want to provide a new study summary. You click first on the entry here, then it will automatically display the versions of this document family in the window above. Then you can select another version and choose replace. So now you see the replace life sign here in this life cycle column. Of course then you can also decide to add a new document to a node. And now this is where the upper party comes into role. Basically what you see here is a condensed display of our documents perspective. So you see the full list of documents available uh, with their versions. So now you can click on anything and you can search for it. Let's say we want to add this document here, you, we, we search for a specific document family, we see a number of versions for this document family and we say we take this version and we want to add it. So we can now proceed and add this version, new version to the talk node. You see we have now added it, you see the lifecycle information in this column here and now we see all the variations which are possible. The blue sign indicates this is the same as in the previous dossier version for this node. The replace sign means a replacement within the document family. The uh, strike through means uh, you have marked the document as deleted. And the green arrow means you have added this document version in this dossier version, in this node. So this is a quick overview about the about how you change existing dossiers. Of course, you can also proceed to create a new talk node if you want. If you think you need uh, you, 
you need to create a new node in a subsequent dossier version. So let's, uh, for example, say we have a document N1. I know this doesn't exist, but just for test node for demonstration, we say we can say, do you want it as a sibling node on the same level or as a child node? We choose child node here. We save, and now we have a new node. And you see also there is a little plus sign to indicate that you have just added this node. We can select the node. Of course, it's empty. And as we've just done, we can select documents to be added. I just randomly select documents to show you how it works. So we select the document family, select a version, and then click Add. So now we have filled the newly created node with three documents, and we see the information about the three documents here also in the talk. What you cannot do and this is my purpose, you cannot delete existing nodes that you have used already in preceding submissions and you cannot move them. So um, if I, for example, let's create a new node. If I create, let's say a document Z as a sibling node on the first level. So here's the node. I can move up the new node to the position I would like to have it. But if I click and, and I can also delete this node again, but what I cannot do if I click on a node that has been uh, submitted before, I cannot delete it. So it's that is not permitted. OK. So sometimes you may lose um, the editing mode. So please make sure you are in edit mode if you want to change things. It is clear when you click Edit Node that you get those buttons up here, which are only available in Edit Mode. Now what we can do, we created a fifth version and we publish it. So let's go back to the publication perspective. The fifth version is still valid. And up here, we have an overview of this lifecycle, which I briefly explained before. And we see now that this dossier version is still in edit mode, so we, we could still continue to edit and change it. Now, when you think it's ready for submission, we have to first take a snapshot and lock the dossier, which we do by clicking on this button. So now this creates a snapshot, and you've seen now that this lower pane appeared, this allows you to do a publication first. This publication in this locked state is intended for quality testing purposes, which means um, you may want to see how a publication looks like. You may eventually detect errors and you want to uh, continue your editing process. So let's publish first. Let's do a quality check. So now we see our new test note here, document N1. This is what we've created. So now you see the things are being exported in and displayed in the viewer. And you see some report data being published here. And let's say, OK, no, this, this note is not correct. I've missed something. So we close the publication. We have to close it that it's being properly reloaded in a later step. And we say, OK, no, when we're not satisfied. So we need to unlock this dossier version again in order to make it editable again. So now we could go back and do some changes and then uh, repeat it, this quality gate checking um, again and again until we're satisfied. So now let's assume we done all this. We're satisfied. We have a locked version, which we have published and verified. And now we can finally proceed and freeze the dossier, which means this is a step which cannot be undone. So do with care. But this is also the prerequisite to create 
another subsequent dossier version. Um, when you go to freeze, you will get the freeze date and now the publication which you then have you uh, can submit to authorities and then if requested continue the new dossier version. We have skipped a few of those perspectives here so let's finish the demo by looking at those. So this is the perspective we have been working with before. This information is this information perspective is uh, nothing exciting. It simply shows you the dossier project information and the version information, which is basically only the version title. So that is not very um, comprehensive. What is more relevant is the information about the dossier product. So for our fifth version, we have actually forgotten to assign something. So let's go back to version one. Let's see what has been present in the imported one. So you see here in version one, we had this substance TC. If we want to have these details, now we see, okay, there was this product here with this constituent. So what you see here now on the right side is nothing more than the information that we have had here in the products and components perspective, just displayed again to show you um, the detailed information about the product you have selected for your dossier. So this is referencing the products and then the components. Now, to quickly show you, we create a new dossier version in order to show you how it looks like to assign a new product. We go there in version six, we go to edit mode, which is some, something we you sometimes may forget. Then we have the possibility to assign the currently selected product to the dossier. We click the button here. Now the product gets assigned and we can save it. So that's basically all. In a similar manner, we can assign dossier sender and recipients to the dossier. We continue just with our newly created version. We go back to edit mode. Now we can select our newly created My Authority and add it as a sender. So on the left side and the upper left side, you see, sorry, you see sender information here and recipient information here. And as before, this adding works with the current selection below. So if I select my authority below here and click add here, it gets added as a sender. And as the recipient, I select the ECPA ESEC dummy entry and I add it here as recipient and I save. And this is now how you assign sender recipient to your dossier. You simply select one of the entries of your repository. So now we have another new version 6. We could again go up there and publish it. So this was a quick walkthrough through the main functionalities of this builder. I couldn't explain everything in detail. Some functionality is explained due to the restrictions in the underlying publication standards CADI and GHSTS. Some constraints are due to the first release because this is a test release and is actually release intended for um, to be extended. And um, everybody is invited to extend this uh, builder because the source code is available on request. So you may contribute to this project by your own developments, by integrations, by further functionality within the tool. Um, please um, contact the um, team by using one of the links provided in the dashboard. 
Finally, I want to show you quickly what is available on this administration perspective. For example, if you want to start from scratch, you want to retry things, you can clear the database, which is just for testing. Um, the middle section is something I think you can skip. And um, this third setting is to check whether you have installed the e-submission viewer in the correct path. If you have installed it in a different path, you can provide the path here uh, to seamlessly open publications from within this builder tool. So you can check by simply pressing open and then the e-submission builder, e-submission viewer should open. without any dossier. So thank you for watching this video. I hope this helps you to get started with this tool. One final hint, there is some online help available. If you click Shift H on your keyboard, you will get little yellow, little blue question marks appearing in the user interface on different perspectives. You can click on them and then the online help is being displayed with some brief information about what you can do in the respective pane. Thanks for watching this video. Keep checking the website. Thanks for watching.